are here were there at the event. Yes, yes, okay. Um, and uh, um, well, this was a really big deal. <coughs> a big deal in um, uh, for Vermont and for the movement and for New York and for disarmament. And um, I am really excited to see the floats that Bread and Puppet produced because I think they made the most extravagant and glorious sequence of floats that they've ever done before or after. So I hope that's in the film. I've only looked at the first five minutes of it. But I'd like to invite Wendy just to say a, sh a short word or two about about your your work at pulling this together and then making this booklet, uh, which we haven't looked at for some 35 years. But here it is. There's my son Jesse. He was on the five years old on the bus. Um, well, what can I say? It was like 15 minutes of pain. Maybe to 10. Um, uh, it was, I don't know, it was like before computers, before yeah, cell phones. Yeah. People were like calling up and finding out about things from each other. And then a couple of days beforehand, uh, CAX came and filmed me sitting on my bed with piles of money and like, <laughs> old teacher called up and said, you're going to get it wrong. And I said, I very clearly told people to take the money into the bank every single day. And, um, uh, but it was also the excitement of people who weren't, wouldn't necessarily be involved at like the bus company. They had never seen anything like this. Like they couldn't book any more buses, and they went as far as like Pennsylvania and up into Canada. And, wow! I mean, to I get had, more. Yeah. And how many workers? Unfortunately, I don't totally remember. I just know from Burlington, I had six buses and six vans because I couldn't get any more than six buses. I also remember talking. I don't know how much far ahead, but it was probably a couple months ahead to people in, um, to somebody in Brattleboro saying, so you just have, you, you have a bus reserved, but you haven't put any money down, that buses are getting very hard to get. You go, go and give them a hundred bucks. Go and put some money down because um, that way you'll definitely be sure that you really have it because uh, these buses are just getting gobbled up all over. And, um, the other, besides the bus company, and in fact, like decades later, um, well, Vermont Transit sort of went away, but this one guy that I dealt with a lot, I want to say his name was Paul, I can't quite remember, worked at uh, Lamoille Valley Transit, which is what we use now, up in Morrisville, and he remembered me from back then, and it was like, it was a big deal. Um, and. So then a couple of houses down from where I, this is when I lived on the corner of, of um, Grant Street and North Winooski, around that. Allison Forrest, um, she would make me food and bring it over. I think, I forget how I know her. I think I knew her from contra dancing. And then her brother happened to be in town. And I made this huge um, blue fabric. It was probably even bigger than that wall, a little bit taller. It was really big. And uh, Kenny painted that sideways dove that Edward Bailey created on it in white paint. You know, it was rough, it was fine. And then he went up. Um, so we left at midnight. And in the dark of night, he climbed the UVM water tower and hung it from there. And the thing is, we got back the next night, like at one in the morning, and it, I think it was raining, but Kenny wanted to make sure that nobody stole it, and he went up and I'm like, it's raining, it's slippery. Anyway, so he um, went up and retrieved it, and it's in my basement somewhere. Um, we haul, used to haul it out once in a while, but it was just one of those little tangential things that sort of happened. And then, um, and then the village voice calling me up and saying, uh, can we get a seat on a bus because we want to fly a reporter up? And um, I said, 
okay. And it was like, do I make them pay the 30 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was like, I can't actually remember what I did. It was terrible, but I can't remember anymore. So then they wrote this huge article um, back in the days when Jim Dyer and Cheryl Green were a couple. Um, what I did was I had um, I had Jim Geyer pick her up. Uh, I had Jim Geyer pick up the um, Jan Hoffman at the airport, and um, because we weren't leaving till so late, he he had all of Frank Teagle's signs. He had put sticks on them and put the staple gun them back to back on the sticks, and he had a truck. Oh, so he, um, hi Jess. Um, brought, um, These are the ones that this vote, town votes. Yes, town votes, town the 177. Names, all the different names of yes, all the different towns. Yes, there were 177 towns. of them. Right, yeah. And so he took Jan to go see the, the sunset over Lake Champlain, of course, because he had to kill a bunch of time. And, um, and eventually she went on the bus and she wrote this big long article and this is where I got called the ultimate contact person. There you are. <laughs> but the biggest thing was that they were putting all of New England at the end of the parade and Red and Puppet at the front of the parade. And I'm like calling up Leslie Kagan and Bruce somebody. Anyway, he, yeah, um, uh, they were the head honchos, uh, the head organizers. And I just said, we can't do this. We have all these families. Some of them are going to be in Red and Puppet. You know, they've been, from, been to New York City. It's a huge place. These are Vermonters. We need to be right behind Red and Puppet. And I just kept bugging them and bugging them. And I think Bruce finally said okay. And um, so I knew where we had to go to. And I remember at some point, I, I think I was going to go do something or other. And I said, don't move. If somebody tries to move you from this block where we're sitting, sit down. Um, because this is our place. And of course, at Bread and Puppet had a very nice organized um, storyline with the different folks that Robin referred to, different sections. But there were so many people, and they got split up, and it was driving Peter Schumann crazy that his storyline was getting broken up. But, um, Anyway, it was an exhausting day, and the other fun thing was the people who had never ridden on a subway before. And that was like nerve-wracking. Anyway, they made it. And um, okay, I'll stop. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you. Well, just one, one more, one more little anecdote uh, for me is, and you know how well organized they were. Leslie Kagan was a was a. Oh. Jesse, did you go to? Did you, were you at the demonstration? I don't think so. Not oh, this one. Uh -huh. well, well, it was a really big one. Yeah. And uh, they uh, prepared for elderly people to mm -hmm. have a couple of, um, uh, you know, assistants just pushing a, a wheelchair around. Mm -hmm. And so my parents were at the stage of, you know, not, uh, they could walk, but they couldn't walk the whole distance. So this person, uh, my mother sat in the wheelchair with my son on her lap, and that was for one block. And then my dad got into a wheelchair, and da da da. <laughs> and it was just so thoughtful. And um, we have to remember to do that, especially as we're all getting older. Um, the <laughs> in the next thing demonstration, was that Leslie Kagan came the following year up to Burlington, Vermont, because we had a big parade through the city, and we were in South Park. I think. Wait, you had 1983 would be the following year because um, the movie we're seeing is 1982. And she started off her speech with, Wendy Coe was right, Vermont belonged at the front of the line. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. okay.